using the sextant we will look through this pinhole onto this mirror and clear piece of glass and find a body in the sky. We'll go into that in detail. We will bring the body down to the horizon and take a mark which means read the chronometer or your wristwatch or whatever timing you have. We will then read the height of that body above the horizon, your horizon, and work the problem. So let's get ready to go into the site form. So you're going to be taught in class that the site form, the filling out of the site form is all important. That's how you will get the line of position that shows where you are. You need the date, which is the month, day, and year, and the name of the body. You get the name of the body from the star finder. It will tell you what body you took. You need a position such as a DR of, in this case, 45, 30, 15 west. And you need to know a rough eye height above the water. So this information you fill out. You read the sextant and fill out this information. This is the raw sextant reading, 1834.3. Now you have to read the index correction and the dip correction in order to come up with the apparent altitude of the body. So the way you get that is to measure the horizon with itself. If the horizon is in the straight line while your sextant reads zero, then everything is fine. But this is a rare case. Normally you're off a decimal or so, which is a small amount, but still needs to be corrected. So you align the horizon up with itself. If the horizon is here and you align it, then you're going to read than you should have. If it's here, you're going to read so by aligning it, you will get the amount. And the word, if it's off, meaning off the horizon, you have to put it on, which is to correct it. If it's on the horizon, you have to put it off to correct it. So you will learn that in the class, but this is a reminder. Now the next thing you need to know is the height of the eye that we're going to call the dip. Now the dip means that you are above the horizon. You're looking down at it. So here's the horizon and you're looking this is your line of sight horizon, where it should be, but you're actually looking down at it, so therefore there's a correction here, and always this is a too much of an angle, so you have to subtract. But the book will tell you that. So you go in for the height of I, which we said was 31 feet, and you get that out of the nautical almanac under dip. Go down to 31 feet 
the dip and you find that the correction is 0.4. So you write that 5.4 on the site form under dip. So now we have corrected for the sexton error called index error and the dip. We take an add and subtract as necessary to get the apparent altitude. So now we have the apparent altitude. So the next thing we have to do is correct for refraction when it comes to a star. Refraction simply means this. The light from the star is coming directly towards you, but when it hits the atmosphere, it bends towards the perpendicular. So therefore, it reads higher than it actually is. Now this is a known calculation, so you can get it too out of the nautical almanac under stars and planets and down to our refraction that we need under apparent altitude. So the refraction is a little more than 18, so 2.9 is the correction. So then you add or subtract that to get your observed altitude. Your observed altitude then is the distance to that star from where you are measured by the sextant. We now have the height observed and we have figured that out to be 1827.0. Now the next thing we have to do is to find out where that body is in the scope. The way we find that is by the time. If you remember, we stopped it to the second and wrote that down. That was 0800 with 12 minutes and 5 seconds. So the first thing we do then is to go into the order, Nautical Almanac for the correct year. I'm using a 1973 Almanac simply because I have them and it works the same in this Almanac today. There might be a slight different reading in the stars, but it still can be used. So we go in the almanac and we find February the 25th on the daily pages. We go down to 8 o'clock and we write down the reading from the almanac for 8 o'clock. 275, that's degrees, 02.6 minutes. So we put that on our form. 275, 02. That gives us for the hour of 800. But we have to take and increase it because the actual time was 12 minutes and 5 seconds after that. So in order to get that information, we go into increments and corrections. Now the increments and corrections, by the way we went in for Aries. I'll explain what Aries is in the classroom. But 
we also go down for the time left over 12 minutes and 5 seconds and that gives us an increase of 3 degrees 01.7 so we write that down and we could add them up at this point but this is only to say where Aries is the stars are measured further by what is known as SHA so we go in for that day that we originally talked about February the 25th and look for Antares under stars let me home in on that you can see Antares is 11303.3 and South 2622.5 both of those go on the site form then we can add those up and we get 39107.6 but you know that there's only 360 degrees in a circle so we could subtract that before the next step but in this case we're going to also subtract our west longitude of 3008.6 now when we do that we come up with 361 which is actually one degree actually the star finder can explain this by saying first of all we put ourselves at the 45 degrees north and 30 degrees 15 west so this is 30 degrees 15 degrees west now the second thing we did was look up the first point of Aries and if you remember it was uh, 275 and roughly 3 degrees more 278 so we put Aries at 278 so there's 270 Aries is 278 now they said Antares had an additional amount called sidereal hour angle of 113 degrees well that 113 degrees takes us down the bottom where Antares is so now we have the information we need including the one degree we figured by subtracting our longitude now this gives us what's known as the local hour angle and that's what we need to go into the next book to do the easy really math with the 229 it's going to figure things out for us we know how far the observed body was by the sextant now we got to compare it with a computer reading of distance.